Okay, so things have started to happen with the Norton. Very slowly and somewhat delayed, but they are starting to happen. Um, oh, yeah, got a new tea mug as well. There we go, already nicely stained. So the cylinder head is no longer in the corner on the bench. That's now been replaced by a pile of micrometers. Micrometer, you might. Don't know what the plural is really, but um, yeah, anyway. The cylinder head has gone off, that went yesterday. Um, to have some valve seats, the old ones cut out of it, and hopefully some new ones put in. Managed to find a local chap, which was nice. And um, the oil tank is gone. That's gone to get fabricated, um, altered, whatever the bits I cut out filled back in. Um, so we need to figure out what we're doing with these crankcases. I've been ringing people and trawling the internet and. Just trying to see what sizes I can get that are useful. And there's not many. So I still haven't decided. Um, I still haven't decided whether to machine that one at all. The bearing's a little bit looser than it maybe should be, but I don't think that one had actually spun in the case. I think that one had just spun on the crank. Whereas this side had done both. So I don't know. What I don't want to do is not do that one, and then it starts. So, um, yeah, not sure. Anyway, I've been acquiring lumps of aluminium from various places. There's some nice big lumps down there. Unfortunately, I might have taught myself into doing some more work because that bit's big enough to make a barrel out of. And an aluminium barrel would be nice. But um, we'll worry about that in the future. Anyway, so I've removed the gap. Um, Remove the gap. I've removed the section of bed on the lathe so uh, we have a gap and fitted the faceplate on and I've just been measuring and if I can make a fixture around an inch deep say out of that piece of inch deep aluminium there should be enough room I'd, I'd bore it and I'd, I'd sit it over the centre bit mount it here and of course four nice bolts got to take the studs out but um, should be able to swing that in the lathe. Which would be nice. Um, it's annoying when you start collecting machinery and bits and then you still have to outsource things. So it would be nice if um, I can manage that myself. So we'll, uh, we'll see about making some fixtures. Now we can't pull this out very far. Um, because the depth of this bore, it does go a mill or two into this thin section. I think that's about a four mil wall. Um, so I can't go mad boring it out. But for now, while I still decide whether we're going for bigger bearings or whether we're going for sleeving it or whatever I'm doing, we're still going to need to be able to fixture it in the lathe. So um, we'll take the uh, face plate back off. Um, select one of the mini chucks that are currently in a pile on the floor. I'll probably go for that one because it's my favourite one. Because um, naturally, once in the face plate, it was at the back of the cupboard under the lathe at the bottom, so everything had to be raved out. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get that to unscrew again. Must admit that bugger was stuck fast. I think it had been on there a long time. Um, yeah, because I think when I bought the lathe, I just simply unbolted the chuck and left that bit on. But um, yes, so, right. I'll see about getting faceplate off, get a chuck mounted. We'll throw that bit of alley in there and we'll see about turning it into some kind of fixture for holding this thing in. Why not, eh? Yeah, okay. Onward. Okay, so I've just done a little clean-up pass. Um, didn't quite clean up right near the centre, but that doesn't matter because we're going to bore it out anyway. And I didn't want to just keep taking meat off the thing. Um, so I've just chucked my largest drill bit through the centre. Make a little holy hole. And uh, we'll see about boring the thing out. 
Because um, of course it's got to fit over that bit. I need to remeasure that because I can't remember what it was and I neglected to write it down. But I've also got to grind up a boring bar. Um, I've got I'll, my favourite one, lovely little thing. Um, I'll bear with it a second, but there we go. It also needs cleaning up and grinding up. Well, that's a nice little delicate thing. Absolutely love that one, it's brilliant. But I've also got this one. This came with a load of stuff I bought, possibly came with a lathe, I can't remember. I've never used it, but um, someone has. So I need to grind that tip up and then we'll see about boring that out. The problem with grinding the tip up is I've got to um, yeah, clear that lot out over there and make some room. Might take a little while. Anyway, onward. Okay, now that should, according to my little ball gauge, be a slip fit over that crankcase over there. Yeah. The surface finish ain't great because I was just ploughing away. Um, it doesn't really matter on this. I should have really left a couple of thou on it so I could do a skin pass, resharpen the uh, tool and do a nice little spring pass and clean it up. But it's a fixture, it's fine. No one's going to see it. Well, except for everyone in here. Right, so I shall whip that out of the lathe and try it on there and see what happens. Bring you back in a moment. Okay, so I have just deburred the edge and let's see what happens. And you probably can't see from there all the junk in the way. Oh, that is a nice snug fit, that is. Should have maybe done a spring pass. That's going to just want a little bit of a tap to go all the way down, so it's going to be uh, as snug as we need, that is. There's not going to be any play in that, which is nice. So, right, I best not put that any further on because I'm going to have to get the thing off. Right, I shall see about removing that. Might need to give it a quick little tap. Um, then we'll have to put some. Yeah, we'll stick three holes in it so I can bolt it to where the alternator bolts on. Um, just little quarter inch screws. And then we want four big holes to mount it to the base plate. I might chuck it back in the lathe first and just true this back side to the front. Right here. Yeah. Onward. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Um, we are realising just how bad the old pillar drill is. You can sort of guess which country that was made in. The guards have broken off it, the stop's broken off it. That actually cost me a couple of quid when that stop broke off because it ruined a bit of work. Um, a couple of years ago I think that happened. But yeah, it's not it wasn't up to the job when it was new and it's definitely not up to it anymore. It wasn't far off being thrown out the door. But anyway, it's managed to punch a few holes through. So they line up nicely with those ones and I've counterboard them a bit so um, well one so the screws off the bike bolts screws yeah so they're long enough and two so that the heads don't stand proud and then I started marking out for the four holes for the faceplate and I've just spent 10 minutes here maybe 20 maybe more maybe longer than I care to admit um, marking out worrying about the cumulative ever if I just start in one point and work around to the others um, so you can see the lines have been rubbed out a few times there's a couple of crosses very close to each other where I've changed my mind and was just wondering how I can get it absolutely spot on and then I offered it up to the face plate and realised that no one really worried about that when putting the holes in the face plate so me putting them in line isn't going to help anything. It's probably going to make it worse. So we're going to go for near enough's good enough. Um, so of course these holes are going to be... They're going to be... What are they going to be? Well, there's going to be four of them, and they're going to be threaded. Um, because that's going to fasten this to the faceplate, and of course these ones screw into there, and nice snug fit over there. Um, but we're going to go for M10B... 1.5 um, 
mainly because I've got a tap in M10 B1.5 and it gives the, the heads are too big to get stuck in here they should sit nicely on this side of the plate and it gives jiggly room in all dimensions so I can tap the thing through on the lathe and also you know they're nice and easy to get hold of um, if, if it comes to it I can go get some cheap ones from B&Q down the road uh, but yeah right so I'm going to stop wasting time trying to mark this thing up perfectly because well, I said the base plate isn't um, and I'll stick some holes in it and see if that thing can manage to do what's going to be the tapping size for 10mm 10mm 1.5 it's going to be 8.5 isn't it yeah see if that can manage to put 8.5mm holes through without me having to swerve at it too much anyway right onward right yeah well we've got the holes drilled took sodding ages um, yeah to adjust the belt twice had to bolt the pulleys back on once and let it cool down for half an hour halfway through but um, yeah it got there in the end came quite close to being thrown out the window anyway I can't tap the thread um, I'll throw that on the floor luckily there's a rubber mat down there so um, yeah Anyway, that's my M10 by 125, not 125, M10 by 1.5 tap. I thought I had a new one. It turns out I haven't. I've just got the one out of that little old set, which I think I bought about 22 years ago, and it was a budget one then. Um, and they weren't the sharpest when they were new, and they are old. They are all just dull now. So, just as I've needed of taps I've bought individual ones turns out I haven't bought a good quality M10B 1.5 so I'm going to have to go find one of those um, it's a little bit late in the evening to find one tonight I think but um, yeah we'll have a look see what we can come up with right onward okay so I have successfully managed to bother a tap off someone it's amazing when you got a sharp tap I managed to do Cut all four threads quicker than I didn't cut one. Um, so yeah, those old taps of mine are going in the bin. Um, so yeah, we've got it just sat on the face plate for now. I'm gonna the the machine face is down, um, so I'm gonna bolt it up tight to the face plate and then just skim that off so it's um, somewhere near as well. Um, let's just flip that over. There we go. Can't really do anything with it tonight. Because I don't have any washers that are big enough. I thought I did, turns out I don't. And I'm definitely not going to get any tonight because it's about quarter to eleven. Um, so it can just stay like that for now. I'll find some somewhere tomorrow. Some nice big thick hefty things. And then we'll see about um, facing that back. You know what, I'm going to put this on the floor before I leave so it doesn't fall off. Um, yeah, so then we'll see about facing that back, whip that off, turn it over, pop it onto there, and then see if we can't um, get the thing all set up in the lathe. Must remember to take them studs out though. Yes. Right. Okay. Onward. Okay. So we've got um, got some bigger washers, and that sort of, yeah. That mounts up nicely. Um, I know the dial gauge is at a bit of an angle, so there's some cosine error to take into account. Um, but just tapping it in with the um, and the old Thor mallet there, that's less than half a thou. Um, and like I said, I, I've just done that quickly, just because I want. I just want to skim this face. Um, well, yeah. That, that centre hole is within half a thou cord, or less than half a thou, so even if you take the cosine error into account, it's still going to be less than a thou. Um, so yeah, I dare say if I spent a couple more minutes doing it, I could get it all the way down. Maybe if I found a bigger gauge with a better resolution on it. Um, but that's it for now, I just want to face this slightly, so that's more than good enough. Right, 
I'll do that. Okay, so there we go. Crankcasing alive. I see. Plenty of clearance there, isn't there? Which is good because I think I need a little bit more room for the other side um, if I decide to machine that. And just the way the fixture is going to sit, it's yeah, going to be a little bit bulkier, I think. We have. Um, I've not put a clock on anything yet. It's just sort of eyeballed and nipped up. But if I uh, press the boat button. We should be able to screw that up okay. Obviously in every dimension because we need to make sure this isn't running out. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. It'd have been nice if these didn't have like that cap bit in the end. Because then I could have bolted the crankcases together, mounted them on here somehow, maybe, if there was enough room, and line board the things. Or pay someone else to line board them. Um either way. But yeah, the way they may, that's not really going to work. Um, so yeah, I'll put a clock on this face, get it somewhere near. Put a clock, well, I'll, I'll start off with a clock on here. Um, just to get it in the ballpark. Then I'll put a clock in here. And then back to there and back and forth until everything says zero all the time. And then yeah, I'm going to have to make a decision on whether I'm um, going to try and find the next size up bearings. If I don't think there's enough meat to do that though, to be fair. Or whether I'm going to bore it out and sleeve it down. Or whether I'm going to sleeve it and then put bearings with a smaller OD in there. There's pros and cons to all of them. Um, I think a lot of it's going to depend on availability. Um, and a flip of a coin, I dare say. But yeah, see big bearings are good, big bearings take more loads, but the bigger your rollers, the higher the surface speed of them, and the lower they can lower speed they can rotate at. So small bearings are good if you want to rev the thing. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Anyway, I think that'll do for now. So, if you're still here, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Ta-da!